Hello, welcome to Bedroom Build at the R Setup Series, Episode 0, Setup and Features. This is a new series about the building a YouTube video upload and management tool written in Rust. So why R Setup? It's fairly easily explained. So the RS is for Rust, then we have YT for YouTube and Uploader uh, was uh, making this a nice spellable thing. Our setup. It will be doing more than uploading, but uh, more about that uh, later. So in today's episode, we'll uh, create the Rust uh, project. We will go over the tools uh, used in my environment when I write uh, Rust code. So this will be a Starship. It's not necessarily needed, but it's a nice, uh, cool prompt that you can use in your shell to show, for example, the info about where you are in your uh, Git repository, which uh, Python versions and Rust versions are active, uh, stuff like that. Then we have the Rust analyzer, which will help us with, uh, for example, auto-completion or finding errors in our code. Another useful tool is uh, Rust's uh, Clippy. That is uh, kind of like a small assistant that will help you write more idiomatic code. So if it finds uh, classic patterns that you might have picked up in other programming languages, that can be solved in a more <clears throat> that can be solved in a more convenient way in Rust. It will hint you towards the more convenient way or towards the community's accepted way of uh, doing things. Then Rust format. So Clippy and Rust format actually come with the Rust up install normally. Rust format will auto format the code for you. So once you hit save, you have nicely formatted code. No need to bother with uh, indenting and all this other stuff while writing code. And the nice tool I found that I also consistently use is uh, Cargo Edit. This one will allow you to add crates to your Cargo Tomo, remove them or upgrade them. And this tool takes away the burden of managing the Cargo Tomo file manually by editing it in your editor. Well, at the end of uh, the episode, we'll publish the little code that we write on uh, GitHub. Now let's go over the motivation as to why I would uh, even want to build an upload tool. Well, in order to upload a video to YouTube, what you have to do is you have to create a thumbnail normally to make an appealing preview of your video. This usually comprises writing a text on top of your thumbnail. So then you have to use a true type font, for example, to write out text as a bitmap and since you mostly want to also show a logo so in my case for my previous series from python to rust i used the rust logo and the python logo to quickly show people that this is about those two programming languages and as well a text that would simply be yet again the title of the episode on top of the thumbnail if i have to do this manually every time that's very time consuming then uh, when I'm recording the files, they already have a meaningful file name. So I don't even have to use the title as an argument. I just use the file name as the title. Then the one thing that I have to come up with differently for every episode would be the description. So this is a command line argument that can be passed. But then the publishing date, for example, is always going to be, for example, I don't know, a Friday. And if you have finished your episode on Wednesday, then this program can automatically for you compute well, the next upcoming Friday and set up the publishing date on YouTube to be a Friday. Since this application is supposed to be used by other people as well, the publish date should be some dynamic option that uh, everybody can set. So either a fixed date or maybe a computed date like coming Wednesday or every two weeks or something like that. Then there's lots of meta info for those videos. So you can assign the tags, which language the video has and the many more things. There's for example, a flag that says if this video is uh, suited for kids or not. And uh, all of these things you would have to at least go over or click and set in uh, the user interface of YouTube. Then I created a playlist to, for example, have all my From Python to Rust videos in my From Python to Rust playlist. 
But then, of course, uh, this new series will go into a separate playlist. And uh, this is also a task that needs to be done after the upload is finished. To manually do that is also many clicks and takes a lot of time. This can be automated. And another cool feature is the last one where you can actually go over all videos in your collection and modify them. This was a practical thing for me because in the mid of my From Python to Rust series, I finally had the time to publish the source code that I wrote for this series. And in order to edit the description of every video and append the information where you can find this source code, I needed something that can go over the metadata of all videos and change the description. So these would be the features that I will implement. And well, this is going to be open source. So you're welcome to contribute once uh, I have finished uh, this series and we can improve uh, on this uh, program even more, hopefully. Now that we spoke about the, the features intended to be implemented, let's hop over to the console. The, the concept of this will uh, not be like a full on uh, live coding session that has been uh, streamed. So I will uh, skip over or speed up the annoying parts where I type out things. So normally when a concept is kind of clear, like for example, the command line arguments, I will not have to explain why I'm now adding many more options to it. Then I will simply quickly add all the options necessary without keeping you waiting. So this will be more like uh, those old school cooking shows where the chef would then go like, and I have prepared this uh, cake for you. And then you see the final product uh, five minutes later, even though this would have taken half an hour. All right, the first step in creating a Rust binary is simply calling a cargo new. So let's uh, do that. And uh, our project will be called our setup. So we call cargo new our setup. Once we've done that, the package has been created and we can hop over to the directory. And here you can see Starship in action. So what it does now is it already gives us this prompt where we have the current directory and it shows us that there's more directories behind that. Um, in one line and in the next line, we get the prompt. So like here, it's waiting for my next input, showing again also the directory where I'm in, plus the branch main of the Git repository that was created by the cargo new step. And that there are some files, but they have not been committed. Plus this is the version of the crate. So it understands this is a Rust crate it uh, shows the version 0 0.1, which is default also by the cargo new step. And we currently have the Rust compiler 154 active. That's a fairly useful uh, tool. The editor that I'm using for the presentations is uh, Vim because it can easily be run in uh, full screen with a large font. And I'm fairly used to it because I do remote uh, stuff often on the servers. That means I might be sometimes doing stuff slowly or in a not optimal form. If you have hints how to improve my Vim usage, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Before starting Vim, uh, there's yet another tool that I'll be using that is called uh, Tmux. So Tmux is a terminal multiplexer. What this does, it will open basically almost like a windowing uh, service if you want within uh, your terminal. So what I can do is uh, run tmux. Now not much has changed because I disabled the um, status bar that would normally show up at the very bottom. The reason is I don't have too much uh, screen real estate doing this full HD uh, streaming. So I chose to omit uh, this uh, status bar. But we are now within a tmux shell. Now let's start the Vim with the default source code that was created for Rust. And here we can see our Vim in action. What we can do in Tmux now is we can split the window and open up a shell. And that is a very cool feature. So let's do that. Now we have uh, the shell here and here we can use cargo build. And run this, but uh, you can see that it eats up uh, space. So what we can do is remove this from our view, but also bring it back again. Let's uh, remove it from uh, view and go over the various features that are provided by the Rust analyzer. 
and Rust format and all this other stuff. So Rust format is uh, fairly cool. So if I write now a new line right here, then uh, Vim will help me with uh, the indentation. But if I wrote an if statement, mm, something useless, I don't know, to equals three, and then we would uh, print line some text. And we also put an else a branch. And I hit uh, save. Then Rust format will be active. And you've seen that this one line that I've written becomes indented and formatted in the way that the Rust community this finds OK. There's lots of options that you can configure your Rust uh, format to do. It can uh, do, for example, tabs at the beginning, or do the indentation of this if, if blocks in a different way, or function names and all this other stuff. But um, I've basically stopped caring about formatting. I just run uh, Rust format on every code. The next tool I'm using is the Rust analyzer, which is using the language server protocol of uh, Microsoft uh, Visual uh, Studio or actually Microsoft Visual Code has uh, started this uh, project. And uh, many, many, many editors support that one. So you, for sure your editor supports as well uh, the Rust analyzer. And uh, using this uh, protocol, it can give your editor hints and auto completions and stuff like that. So if I were to write now a function that does not exist yet because I haven't defined it, and I write uh, this out, it will highlight, and if I move over, it will tell me that um, this function cannot be found in scope, and that's a Rust C error that's coming up. So Rust Analyzer will help you quickly identify problems or autocomplete your code once you have uh, more complicated structs with methods already attached. Then it will autocomplete those, for example, stuff like that. The next uh, thing will now be uh, Clippy. Clippy is also very helpful. It, as I said before, will help you to write more idiomatic uh, code. Let's uh, quickly run over an example of uh, what uh, Clippy does for us. The Clippy example, I have uh, quickly coded up a few lines to do that. So what we are doing here is we have our small vector and we are trying to print the values of all vectors. And you can already see that this expression is underlined and uh, something is not happy with this code, but it's not an error. So this would actually work, but it's not uh, the Rust way of uh, programming things. So what you can uh, see now, if, if we go over the highlighted code, it will tell us that we are needlessly using a range loop because we are only using it to index over the vector. And uh, that's not how we are supposed uh, to code in Rust. So you, to, in order to make Clippy happy, we can simply go for element in stuff iter and and we can print line the lm. And now we can see we have written the code and this becomes not highlighted and this does the same thing. And this is now an approved way of accessing the items in a loop. So Clippy is uh, very, very useful to learn the language and also maybe identify uh, bottlenecks in your code because oftentimes we would also highlight, for example, in your functional programming iterators. Once you have uh, chained iterators, there are sometimes more efficient ways of avoiding, for example, construction of objects and that can speed up your code uh, very drastically. Let's hop in uh, to our split screen uh, shell and quickly run so we can uh, cargo run and this will now build our thing and we can see that it actually does twice the same so it outputs the one two three one two three one time in the non-idiomatic loop and one time in the idiomatic one and the condition is false so we get the sdf as well printed so let's uh, get rid of uh, the example code that doesn't actually do anything and upload the whole thing to uh, GitHub. For this, I will hide 
the, the split screen. We will remove the code. And then we can hop over to uh, GitHub. So here we are on uh, my GitHub page. All I have to do is create a new repository. I will also call it our sit up because that is available. It will be uh, public and we will not initialize this repository with anything. We we can put a description actually, so it will be Rust or let's go YouTube upload and management tool. Rust. And we might want to add B here. And now we can uh, use this help. Since we already have an existing repository, all we have to do is copy and paste this line. In order to follow what we've seen on the GitHub website, now we can uh, quit our Vim. Simply run this uh, git remote thing that uh, run the git remote add command that we've copy pasted. And now we can actually add some of the code that was generated. So if you look in here, we can see that we have now the cargo toml file, uh, source and target. Target will be generated by cargo run, so we don't have to use that. And if you go git status, you can also see that the target directory is ignored already by default because we have a git ignore file created for us by cargo new. This means we can git add the git ignore file, the cargo toml, and the source uh, main. Then we uh, git commit and go initial project setup. And then we can git push. It will probably complain. Yes, because we haven't set the upstream yet, but Git is very nice. It helps us with the right command. And once we've done that, this code is now visible on GitHub. Let's verify. If we click on the code again, it will reload. And here we go. We have these uh, things set up. Now, this is a very good uh, hint. We should add a readme. Let's quickly uh, come up with a readme and add uh, that one as well. Let's add a readme. We'll have a readme markdown. We quickly create Rust. And we can uh, copy paste uh, the features. I will quickly do that. This concludes the tools used for uh, this series and uh, the quick uh, project setup and explanation of uh, what we will try to achieve here. Thanks for watching. Coming up next on the R setup series will be the date math necessary to compute the published date for the user.